Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE's live coverage of OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. My co-host, John Troyer, is here, and happy to welcome back to the program, Mark Baker, who's a product manager with Canonical. Mark, how's the show treating you so far? The show's been going very well. So we've seen um, people coming to us uh, on the show floor, coming to the, coming to the sessions. We're seeing um, real interest in building scalable production clouds. And so, uh, and coupling that with a lot of container technologies and a lot of other complementary technologies like machine learning. So a lot of the discussion is, can we build clouds? But also much more about the workloads and the kind of integration with um, parallel, if you like, uh, or adjoining technologies. Great. I want to talk about the customers, really, Mark. Yep. So, as you said, uh, you, you've been to a few of these shows. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we, we've been to, to a few of these also, and the makeup of the attendees has changed a bit. Uh, one of the things I heard, uh, it is 2x the number of cloud architects with yep. their, t their title uh, compared just to, to last year. A uh, little bit of a broadening into the, to the scope. What are you hearing from customers? What brings them here? What's exciting them uh, you know, in this environment? So, I mean, yes, certainly cloud architects and, and at Canonical, we regularly talk to cloud architects uh, and um, because architecture of the cloud is something that evolves, it's not something that's pinned, right? As workloads evolve and, and new uh, technologies come along, uh, you need to be able to evolve that architecture and therefore people that understand that are important. Um, I think it's, it's also noticeable, you know, I'm sat here wearing my blazer, it's noticeable seeing um, quite a few people around the show uh, wearing blazers. And so you go back in uh, a couple of years ago or even a year or so ago, um, there was, it was very much a sort of developer-centric uh, uh, type of event. We're seeing more business conversations now and even discussing things such as money and economics, uh, which weren't necessarily conversations that we were getting too heavily in, you know, uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, there, there's there's still a, a bunch of the hoodie set uh, oh, for here, sure. uh, lots of cool mm -hmm. uh, T-shirts, and uh, yeah, uh, ironic facial hair and, and mm -hmm. the like. So um, uh, yeah, yeah. It maybe f f from your standpoint at, at Canonical. Talk a little bit about the, those constituencies of, of who to sell to. We've got the operators, you've got the developers, you've got the you know C-suite. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm sure the answer is you know yes, but yep. uh, you know who, who do you find yourself? Maybe maybe help walk us through some of those roles that you're talking to, some of the biggest concerns sure. that they're having, and how you're helping them. So in most most enterprises that we go and talk to, we're typically talking to uh, initially operations. Right, because they know that they need to be able to provide these services to cloud services and container services to their, their customers internally within the business. And they're looking at, okay, how can we operate this? How can we secure it? How can we scale it in, in smart ways? And they're looking for our help and assistance doing that. Um, very soon after that, we'll need to go and talk to developers or engage the line of business uh, developers, um, primarily because we need to, this represents change for them. Uh, moving into a cloud or moving their applications to containers represents change. And we want to get them onboarded into this environment and to start to, to begin that change as quickly as possible. Um, the cloud, to succeed, it needs to have many running workloads on it. And so engaging with the developers to, to take advantage of the capabilities the platform can provide is really important. We'd love to be able to go and talk to at that sea level and we are starting to have more of those conversations, but I think the type of infrastructure that, uh, um, that OpenStack and container technologies provides, it's the initial uh, interest is very much coming from those operators, from the architects, and from the developers. Well, let's talk about operators for, mm -hmm. for a minute. I mean, uh, once upon a time, there was a tribe of people called sysadmins, and yep. they were kind of surly, and they, they took care of things like Linux, Yep. right? And uh, now, out of that Linux uh, framework, there's, a, there's a, a huge set of technologies uh, mm -hmm. that, have, that have grown all based on Linux, yep. uh, all that Canonical works with, um, and there's a new set of skills required. Can you talk a little bit about what the new operator needs to know and how, you're, how, how you can help train people? And Canonical can help train people, and if you're a sysadmin working with Linux, you know, what, what different things do I need to care about now in the cloud management world, cloud operator world? Yeah, sure. So, um, you're right, it, it used to be relatively simple. Uh, and that uh, you would uh, run a VM or you'd run an application on top of bare metal and would, you know, there'd be certain things you need to be able to tweak to scale it and, and, and to up the performance. But when you're running in, um, as we say, more agile infrastructure, so whether it's cloud and containers or combinations of both, 
um, there are very many different variables and how an application is able to take advantage of the storage or the capabilities that the platform provides means there's, there's many different knobs and dials that you can turn. Um, we, we tend to be uh, advising right now people on, on uh, bringing in services such as CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, so that um, they can start to adopt some of these newer, newer ways of working. Um, operators now need to, they need to be much more aware of okay, what the workload characteristics are and how that might you know, behave on a hypervisor or how it might behave within a, a containerized environment. Um, uh, I just came out of a conversation with a customer, for example, that was asking detailed questions about storage performance. Right? They have applications that require certain levels of storage performance, different types of storage that we can bring to bear in conjunction with an OpenStack, which is going to be the appropriate one and how do they segment them. And so it's definitely become more complex, but I think through collaboration events like this, we're actually getting much better at being able to provide them with the information and the choices they need to make. Yeah, Mark, speak to us a little bit about the community. You know, OpenStack started heavy users mm -hmm. in the community, contributing to the community. How do you see that dynamic playing out today? Well, there's still lots of contribution coming into OpenStack, and that's good to see. Um, we are starting to see, you know, as our OpenStack has matured, as the marketplace has matured, um, some of the focus no longer being purely on contributing code, but now um, sharing experiences uh, around operations. And that's starting to move into this area, people use this phrase, um, uh, infrastructure as code, um, to be able to access infrastructure programmatically. I think it's, we're seeing collaboration now in, in the OpenStack community and, and, and uh, adjacent communities around collaborating on the operations especially when those operations themselves are encapsulated in code. So, um, very simple things, um, sound simple, not necessarily easy to do, but being able to upgrade and update in place, uh, how you would sort of suspend a system whilst you perform some maintenance and evacuating the workloads and bringing them back in, and those kinds of very common tasks for cloud operators. Um, we saw, even just a few years ago, uh, how operators would ha each have their own way of doing it, their own preferred methods, and this was you know, generally not so efficient. So uh, collaborating on those and sharing best practices is, is one of the really interesting th things to see within this community today. Sure, sure, I mean, you, you, I think the evolution goes, everybody then starts to write scripts, but you all write scripts in your own way, yep. but eventually you have to come up with a framework. Yes. Uh, you know, and you all have developed a couple of different frameworks in terms of installation and upgrades and things like that uh, as abs well. Absolutely, and it's one of the, one of the things that once the customers start to understand that we've developed a framework around operations, those operations are encapsulated within code, um, and it means that if we have a customer, Deutsche Telekom for example, one of our customers that, that is understandably very security conscious uh, because they run a telco network, um, has best practices around the security um, uh, of, their, of their cloud, and we're able, when they start to make recommendations or updates to that, we're able to take those and share them with a broad audience and get that sort of collaborative spirit around what's the best way to be able to do this, right? Yeah, so you mentioned security there. Any other kind of key pain points? What are you hearing out in the marketplace? Is GDPR something that a lot of your oh, customers are yeah. beating on you? And, and what's, what's the canonical position there? Yeah, absolutely. So GDPR has been a, a real catalyst for people to look at areas of security uh, that they probably meant to get around to at some point, but, but ne never had, so. Um, some people said it's the Y2K of uh, you know, this generation. Yes, right? exactly, <laughs> it's definitely a forcing function. And so one of the areas that, that we've seen um, a lot of activity around, and, and certainly we've committed resources to it within, within the last couple of months, has been around encryption of data at rest. So obviously in the cloud, you're going to have a lot of data that's, that's there with, with the relevant workloads. And uh, some of that regulation, GDPR regulation, is about you know, what happens if somebody removes a disk from a server, does that mean that they have access to the data? As we start looking at um, uh, things such as edge cloud, so with you know, very many clouds close to, close to the customer or close to the edge, um, which don't necessarily have the same data center infrastructure around them, how do we secure the data there, right? So um, encryption of data, but doing it in a way that doesn't require you to manually type passwords in to be able to access them all of the time is not a simple problem. And we've spent uh, uh, quite, a, you know, quite a few resources um, uh, working out how do we address that, how can we do it in a way that's going to be, allow it to be dealt with economically and scalably. Yeah. 
there's been a lot of talk about open infrastructure in general here yep. at the show. And OpenStack obviously is designed to manage infrastructure, mm -hmm. but we've already talked about containers here uh, with you yep. in this segment. Uh, there's a, a lot of container news, uh, Kubernetes news, mm -hmm. uh, Open Dev Summit going on at the same yep. time. So how do you, as a, as a product manager, you can't just be worried about one part of the stack. How do you and the, your teams uh, you know, in, worry about that integration and that unified platform and bringing together these interactions with all these different open, store, open source projects? Oh yes, for sure, and that's, I mean certainly it's one of the things that Canonical's been, been uh, cognizant of or working on for, for quite a long time is a Linux distribution at its heart is really the integration of very many different components from the kernel and libraries and compilers and all the various uh, uh, other pieces that go with that. So, Understanding how these components plug together, whether it's OpenStack with containers and Open vSwitch for the networking and Ceph for storage, for example, that's very much part of what we've been doing. We're learning with customers as we go very much that um, how they want to plug these things together with Kubernetes. It could be Kubernetes running alongside OpenStack, Kubernetes running on top of OpenStack, OpenStack even running on Kubernetes, some of them are looking at. So understanding how they people want to be able to plug technologies together and um, we standardize very much on sort of reference architectures of combinations of OpenStack plus Kubernetes as a, as a really simple example. But then as part of our QA process, testing process, all the reference architectures that we build with hard, uh, hardware partners and, and other partners too, is ensuring that we're able to deliver that as a, a standalone product as required, but also as effectively solutions together that are fully integrated, fully supportable, and are going to deliver the capability the customer needs. Okay, first of all, the, the uh, OpenStack on top of Kubernetes, really, is, is that something you'd recommend to customers, or it's, is, is it is it is there a specific use case for that? It's not something that we recommend today. So there's been certainly a lot of discussion in the OpenStack community around um, the control plane, and how, what's the best way to deliver the control plane. Uh, Canonical made a, a very strategic or specific choice uh, several years ago that actually uh, containerizing the services is the right way to do this. So we containerize basically all of the control plane services uh, apart from Neutron Gateway, which can be a little tricky to do that. But um, we containerize all of the all of the, those services and it gives us flexibility uh, when we want to perform updates and migrate services between different systems, for example. Um, how do you manage those containerized services though, there's lots, lots of diversity of opinion. Some people want to be able to do that with Kubernetes, um, and that's great, and we, we certainly track those efforts and uh, uh, work with those, with those people uh, if they're using Ubuntu or some of our technologies. But I think you know, the, the, it's, it's still yet to be decided what's the best way to be able to yeah, do Yeah, so you, you, must, you have an interesting job as a product manager. You always want to productize and in, in general standardize as much as possible, and yep. yet in these communities you have the diversity of opinions. Oh, I'll take this piece, I'll get rid of the core, I'll do something over here, I'll mm -hmm. flip it up down, how, how do you balance that, giving customers choice, that making sure you can deliver solid offerings that you can support? And, and, and so, I mean, that's very much it. It's a, it's a choice we can say, look, we can deliver a robust, high-performing cloud with these reference architectures. We've learned that you know, through experience with customers and working with our partners. We understand customers all believe they're special and they all have their own special requirements, uh, often with good valid reason. And so, but we'll always try and start from a base and then say, let's start to iterate through that, uh, adding in additional capabilities or you know, maybe tweaking something for your particular use case if you do that and see how it impacts the cloud. Because for us to be successful, over us, the OpenStack community to be successful, we need to ensure that they can, those clouds can live and breathe and evolve over time. And if they're making um, too many or too heavy uh, a customization of that cloud, then it can start to impact their ability to, to do that. So it's, it's you know, we'll offer, we're all offer that choice. It's speaking a little bit on the line of standardized services, mm -hmm. I'm really intrigued by managed OpenStack yeah. uh, from, from Canonical. Can you talk a little bit about what customers it's right for and when it comes into the conversation and then if we are in the life cycle, because I guess then it can also eventually uh, go away as, as the control gets handed back over to the customers when they don't, when, yeah. they, when they're finished with, uh, managed. Absolutely, so we started providing um, what we call Bootstack uh, as, as a, a fully managed OpenStack service, primarily um, to address the skills gap within the OpenStack community. So we saw a lot of companies interested in deploying OpenStack, a lot of enterprises looking for OpenStack, but they couldn't find the talent or the people with the, the experience of deploying and managing OpenStack. Um, 
just there weren't the people around, right? Hiring was hard. So, um, and that was becoming a blocker for us to be able to deliver clouds to those customers. And so we started to offer a managed service. We had a lot of those reference architectures and best practices pretty well nailed down. Um, but it was a facilitator for them to get up and running with the cloud and at a point where they, they became comfortable operating it, managing themselves, uh, hand, hand control back. We've seen that as a very popular model and that, that period where they're having us manage it can be six months or 12 months or 18 months, but the customers know they have the reassurance that they can take it back control in house, um, that they can operate it themselves and they can um, you know, manage their own environment. They become self-sufficient, but they're not doing that from day one. We're holding their hand and taking them along that path. So that's, that's been a very popular offer. All right, well, Mark Baker, really appreciate you giving us an update on really the broad spectrum of customer mm -hmm. use cases and, and all the updates from Canonical. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman, back with more coverage here from the OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. Thanks for watching theCUBE.